Hey, welcome back. This is Building a Stock Tracker in React Part 4. So in the last video, we essentially got all of our data being pulled in from the IEX Cloud API. And we realized that maybe it's the way that it works, maybe it's the free tier. Again, I probably need to go do a little more research, but in any case, the API endpoint we are using is getting us stale data. And so what we want to do uh, to sort of help us abstract away how we're pulling in the data and make it easier if we want to swap in something else is we want to refactor this in a way where we really don't have any dependencies in our display code and the actual data that's being pulled in. So you'll see what I mean by the time we get to the end of this. We won't have anything in this file about IEX at all and we'll do our best to make sure there's nothing IEX specific in here. So to that end, let's create a new folder over here and we're just gonna call this resources. Now, I'm, I've done a little bit of thinking on this, but I'm also kind of making it up as I go. So I'm gonna create a new file in here and I'm gonna call this stock.js. And I'm going to essentially do something like I did there. So we're gonna export a constant, uh, export const stock. And then inside of here, what I want to do is define a function. And this function is going to be called, uh, let's call it latest price. And it's going to take an argument, which is going to be a ticker. Okay. And then what I want to do essentially is grab all of this. Well, I don't want to get the then part there because we can't really we can't really call set state or probably shouldn't call set state from somewhere else. So let's just paste this in here and see where we end up. So right now, if we were to uh, try to use this, it would break because we don't have access to IEX. So let's go back up here and let's just copy and bring in the same deal. So now we have our IEX, so now we're going to say uh, IEX base URL stock, and then now we just need to say ticker because it's coming in as an argument. And we IEX API token, okay, okay. So then what we need to do is say uh, const query equals, and then we need to return this query, I think. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so now let's go back over here. So let's just save this and nothing's going to blow up because we're not really using it anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and import stock from dot dot slash resources slash stock dot js. Um, and it's blowing up because of what? Export const stock. Did I do something wrong? Oh yeah, I need to actually use a equal sign. Okay, so still no problems. Now, instead of this fetch business, let's comment this out. Let's comment this out. Let's comment this out. And now let's say stock dot um, latest price and then give it our uh, uh, this dot props dot ticker and let's save this and see what happens so we're still getting the exact same stuff right so let's just eliminate all this boom that's gone so now we don't have anything in here about IEX and we're still working just fine so this is getting a little bit more uh, advanced in terms of thinking about design patterns and and that sort of thing but let's go ahead and do it because I think it's useful so in a sense we don't have any dependencies on IEX in here because we're not actually saying IEX we're just talking to this new stock class that we made or stock object however we do have a dependency on IEX because we're using the method names coming from IEX and right here, we're having to deal with the fact that the, the IEX API is giving us data back in a particular way. 
Now it's really hard to totally eliminate these dependencies. I'm going to get rid of my console.log there. It's hard to totally eliminate these dependencies, but we can do better than we are now, I think. So what we're going to do is actually we do need to push this next then back up into our stock.js, and then we're going to send this in as a callback, probably, something like that. So let's look back over here and just refresh our memory on what's going on. So when we call fetch URL then response response.json, this is going to return back a promise. And so in order for us to chain another then onto the back of it, we have to return the actual promise. So we return a promise here, and then inside of stock row, we chain a then onto it. So we hit say stock dot latest price then. So what we want to do is actually push this up into the stock, and then we're going to set the state as a callback. So we'll do that next. So I like to refactor in very bite-sized chunks, so or at least to the best of my ability. So I'm going to start by moving this set state thing into a function. So I'm going to say Let's just call this like apply data. Let's call it apply data and it takes a data argument. And then we can run this like this. And then let's try this dot apply data data. And let's just save it and see if we're still working. And we are. Then Let's back this out so that we can get this all on just one line. See how this goes. Okay, so that works. Okay, so now let's try to actually get our callback going. So what this would look like is we're going to pass in, instead of just a ticker, we're going to pass in a ticker and a function. So we want to pass in the apply data function, right? Then so in the new context, this is actually going to be the callback, right? So I can just cut this in theory. And then over here, we don't need to return this anymore. And I'm going to split this onto different lines. And I need to actually allow a callback to be passed in. And let's save this, and it's going to blow up. And let's save this and let's see what happens. Cannot read set state of undefined. So what's happening is once we start trying to call this through the callback, it loses this. So it doesn't know what this is anymore. And so what we can do here is actually call dot bind this. And I don't actually understand this concept well enough to fully explain it. I just know that it's what we need to do. So I'm going to research it and get back to you in another video. But if we save it, it makes this available uh, when, when this gets called via the callback. So now we've eliminated uh, anything to do with um, IEX in the component did mount thing, but we still actually haven't um, cleared up any of the problems we set out to do. So now we've just made things more complicated. Um, but there's a benefit to it which we're about to get to. So what we can do now is consider that how do we actually want to, to do this? So we don't want to be doing this data, data dot length minus one thing, right? Like in our, our preference would just be to say data is data. And then down here, we don't really want to be calling it based on their specific things here. So, you know, we put ticker, price, date, and time. And we can change these later if we want to. But for now, I want to say, I want to call this price and time. So I'm going to save this and it's all going to blow up because obviously that doesn't match anything. Well, it doesn't blow up. It just doesn't do anything. So that's fine. So what we want to do, and what we're actually trying to do here is create a formatter. So you'll see what I mean in just a second. So right now, all we're doing is just callback data. So I'm going to split this up. Um, let's just save it, make sure we don't break anything inadvertently that's not already broken. So what we can do here is say, like um, formatted data equals an empty object, empty object. And then we could say something like formatted data 
uh, and then we could say, um, hold on, let's grab our uh, stock stock data equals data, and then we'll do our data dot length minus one business, and then we'll say formatted data dot price equals stock data dot close and then we'll do this for each of the other things we care about so then we'll say date is date and the uh, time is the label and I don't need that and then I just want to actually call back with formatted data Stock data is not defined. Okay, so I need to say const stock data, const formatted data. Okay, so now we're actually back to where we were. All right, so this is actually pretty awesome, and I want to explain to you what we've actually achieved if you don't see it yet. So what we've actually done here is we've defined an API for ourselves, so we know what we want to call things, so we're not sort of taking instructions from a third party, so to speak. And then what we do is in this file, we're going and getting the raw data from the third party, and then we're transforming it on our end into what we want to use. So the reason this is good, and we're actually going to go a little bit further with this so that it's even easier in the future, but what we've really set ourselves up for is if we need to swap data sources, if we need to use something other than IEX, or we want to use something other than IEX, um, what we can do is swap in the new data source and then all we have to do is build a formatter in theory it's not always that simple but i just wanted to set it up this way so that at least we have a shot where everything we build isn't totally dependent on one data source so let's go ahead and just clean this up a little bit so um, what we can do is just sort of pick this apart um, and so i'm going to write a new method called uh, latest price URL like URL on caps and it's going to take a ticker okay I need to put a comma here and I'm just going to take this and I'm going to cut it and I'm going to paste it and now I need to say const URL equals this dot latest price URL and then pass in my ticker and let's save that and let's see what happens expected an assignment or function call I think I need to return here that's not bad let's save that okay cannot read property latest price URL alright so I need to say stock here okay so now we're back okay so I can actually clean this up a little more instead of setting it to anything let's just put it in there like that so fetch the stock latest price URL okay now the last thing I want to do is actually explicitly call this a formatter you know like like a format method so let's create another function here and let's call it a format price data and let's just take in data and actually that's not how you write that data and I'm going to go ahead and just copy all of that crap paste it in here okay and then we're going to return formatted data And then we can say stock dot formatted price data data and let's save that and see what happens so now that we have that split out like that I'm gonna go ahead and move this move this thing onto its own line I think I'm missing parenthesis save it We're still good to go okay so the idea here is that if you need to get stock data from a different source or if, if we decide to pull it even from the same API but a different URL um, 
what we can do is just change the URL here and then we'll need to adjust the formatter based on whatever data we come or whatever the data looks like that comes back so for example <clears throat> you know right here we're doing this little thing like pulling this out and that's because the data we get back comes back as an array and so we need to get the last one um, if we get back something that just sends back a single item then we we'll, won't need to do this so depending on where we pull the data from we might need to do different formatting the other concern and the only real weakness of this is that we're relying on the fact that we actually have access to price, date, and time. So it's possible that you pull back data from a source that doesn't give you date and time. Um, but you know, like that can be handled in other ways. So let's say that we find a real time API where we're going to pull back a stock price. Um, and we need the date and time still. Well, if you pull back real time, you know, that's now. So you can say the date that is now and the time that is now, for example. Um, but anyway, um, this is pretty minimal as a dependency, but it is. this is the only real dependency right here, this formatting. This is the only dependency we really have on, and this, on, uh, on IEX now. So it's pretty good, it's pretty solid. So if you need to do anything different, um, I'm actually gonna see what I can find. I think I'm actually interested in this, so I'm gonna see what other data sources I can find. I don't know if it'll be the next video, um, but in the near future, I'm gonna add a video to this series where we just try to play with different data sources. But I gotta find some. I know there's plenty out there, but I'm just, I'm not as familiar with this space as I would like to be yet. So I'm gonna look around and we'll see what we can find. And then we will uh, just kind of play around with how to swap in different stuff, and that will be pretty interesting. But I don't know if that'll be next, so it's either going to be something like that, or it's going to be some more into like working on the front end. Uh, so in any case, um, just uh, if you're interested in this, definitely subscribe so you can stay up to date with what we're doing. Um, but I will talk to you in the next video.